Take number two on wiring a 20 volt battery into these little Power Wheels full wheelers. I have a collection of these, as you can see. Now, I didn't test this um, because I bought all this stuff at the same time. I guess I should have bought the batteries and this little device and then tested how many amps were running through it. But I thought that this would work considering there's 20 amps. Um, however, I ended up melting several of these things. Actually, I wired up quite a few of them because they worked and then the kids went and drove them and they started just one by one stopped working. And so uh, it's just too much, too much amperage going through this. I don't remember exactly how much it was because I've ordered some more stuff and I just haven't got time to do it. So now I'm doing it. Uh, let's see. So this thing right here, 20 amps, it worked great uh, as far as cutting the voltage off and everything because I don't want to deplete these where it ends up ruining the cycle. I actually had a bunch of these that I bought. I'll show you in here. Uh, and only two of them really charge. The rest of them didn't charge. And that was even using this as a cutoff at 16 volts. So uh, I contacted the company. They sent me 14 to replace the 14 that's not charging anymore. Just sweetie. Just sweetie. And so um, where I'm standing with this is I ended up purchasing this 24 volt uh, solenoid to try to figure out how I could take the brunt of the amps running through it and cycle it through this thing rather than cycling it through this actual board. So what I have is I have in concepts, prep this a little bit better. I have the battery power, which is the red right here. This battery power runs down and runs into this side. Then I have a power running from here into this unit. Then I have coming out of this unit onto one of these legs. Then I have the motor from the four wheeler on the second leg. And then what I ended up doing is I tied a ground from here to a ground to the other side. Then I also tied the same ground to the negative on here and the negative on here. So I basically just took, a, what was that? One, two, three, four, and then the motor is five. I had five grounds tied together. I have a big old wire nut down in there. You can see, maybe not. Big old wire nut down in there. So what I have is I have the battery running to this from here, running in, because it goes over to that side, into the board. From the board out, it runs out of the board and then runs to turn the solenoid on. The motor goes from here and runs down. Make sure none of this is like getting hot or anything because <laughs> I've never done this before. Then I have all the grounds that tied together. I have the ground from the battery, the negative post on this voltage regulator, and then I also have the ground from the motor, so it completes the circuit, ran to the opposite side or the second side of this um, solenoid. So power, uh, ground. I tried it without the ground because I've never wired up one of these things and it wasn't turning on as soon as I clicked that. This thing activated and then I was able to get power. So I've also regulated this thing, push that to uh, 17 and a half volts. So that is gonna turn off on 17 and a half volts and this is a 20 volt battery. I'm thinking that the uh, going down to 15 volts was just not enough and it may have killed the cells. But what I did to test this is, you know, I have a whole bunch of DeWalt tools. I ran this down till the, till the drill shut off and then I tested the volts of this and it was like 15 volts. And I did that twice with two different batteries and this was cut off at 15 volts. So I set this at 15 and a half volts. So that way these batteries would last a little bit longer and it wouldn't short cycle them or drain them too much, you know, cause these things have a built-in shut off. But I guess it just wasn't enough for this brand. I'm sure if I was using the DeWalt batteries inside of this and had it at 15 volts, the DeWalt batteries were, were, would work perfectly fine. But these right here just stopped working. So my plan is I'm going to get one of these working, which I have. I'm gonna have the dr kids drive it around and see if this board, because this board is no longer taking the brunt of the amperage, because whenever you push this right here, it turns, but then whenever you turn this, it turns on both of them. And that amperage surge is what was causing those boards to melt. So that's where I'm at with this. Got the 20 volt batteries. I picked up this, picked up this and this all off of Amazon. And uh, I also picked up this little holder thing right here. And if all of this works correctly, and I'm gonna put it in the dune racer next, that's what I'm going to wire up right now. If that one that was pulling the most 
um because i put an amp meter on it and that one over there was i mean shoot it was pulling close to 40 something uh amps whenever it surged into high gear so that one melted the quickest and that's the first one that went out so i'm gonna go ahead since the concept works and i got this one wired up and you can see i put a little block in here i took this wired a zip tie through it to hold it around the outside this thing i just got lucky because i did drill holes on that side and i was going to zip tie out out to that and hold this thing but that back of that board has a bunch of little prongs so i was fortunate enough that it fit right in between that plastic i was able to snug it in there and then i put one screw to keep it from you know coming out so we're going to test this out see how it works i'm going to build the dune racer and if all this ends up working, I'll put descriptions to everything or put links down to everything that I bought down in the description. But as of right now, we're going to test it.